Narcissists are predators. When they choose someone as their prey, they test this prey as, at various parameters. They make sure that this prey has the qualities, the traits, the capabilities to provide the narcissist what they need from it. And that is what makes narcissists so lethal and dangerous. Hi, I am Danish, a narcissistic abuse recovery professional and in today's episode I'll be talking about 7 ways a narcissist tests you to make sure that you are a good supply. Before we begin, make sure that you press that subscribe button and push that bell icon to stay updated with every piece of content that I post here. And to begin with, let's begin with the number one way. The first thing that a narcissist looks in you is your capability to keep taking on the abuse. What I mean by that is that a narcissist in the beginning of the relationship is quite amazing, shows you the brighter side, the kinder side, the affectionate side, but at the same time does something what I call as mini discards, mini devaluations to check what is your level of tolerance. They are testing the waters to see if you can take their abusive behavior, if you are the one who is who justifies abuse because of your past experiences, if you're one who can oversee or not see their true nature, if you're someone whose boundaries are weak. So as they do this, they just uh, either, for example, they could give you a silent treatment, they could throw a tantrum, they could devalue you subtly and covertly and see what you do. You know, they may cut you off a little bit, stop messaging you as intensely as they did in the beginning. And then if you come after them, that is what they need. A narcissist needs someone who needs them, who runs after them. And if you do that, that is how they make sure that you are the premium kind of supply. The other trait they look for in their potential supply is if they're a giver or not. What I mean by that is that if in your childhood you were abandoned and your primary way of connecting is overgiving and oversharing and self-sacrificing, they would test it out. They would, you know, for example, ask for things, you know, make ridiculous demands and see if you can say no or not. See if you have certain limitations or not. If you don't, that is all good. And once they know you don't, they go all the way in. And slowly, slowly that turns into them treating you as a garbage bin because they know no matter how they treat you, no matter how much they take from you, you are still going to be there. Which leads us to the trait number third is um, being a fixer how big of a fixer you are. Again, if you have your childhood wounds and you were someone who was the caretaker of the family, you became the caretaker of your parent or your siblings, and you were the one who would fix everything in the family, then that wound can, can get activated here in the narcissistic relationship and they test that as well. If they see that you are a fixer, if they see that you are the one who, is, who never gives up and who finds solutions and who goes around and makes things run who, who fixes things they would on purpose break things in the relationship and then wait for you to fix them if you go on and do the fixing you become the premium supply they are looking for before I move to the point number four, make sure that you put your experiences in comments below by dropping a comment so that other people can feel validated and understood and feel a lot less alone. Number four is being super empathetic, being caring, being sympathetic. A narcissist would, would create a sob story, would create a, would fabricate a story, a, a, a web of lies that about their past, how they were treated miserably by everyone they have been with so far, or how their childhood was painful and how they were traumatized. They do not do it with the intention of sharing it with you or being vulnerable. It just, they are just testing what you are going to do in response. And of course, anyone who is healthy would show compassion, would show care, would show understanding. 
but it depends on to what level. Again, the fixer wound can get triggered again here in, in this fourth test and you may then, it's like making a promise to yourself, this person has been hurt so far by everyone they have met, I will be the one who will change that. I'll be the one who will give them a different experience. And surprisingly, you are not the first one to say that, to believe that, to think that. There have been countless people before you that have done that, th thought that, and never got anywhere with the narcissist. So they become the victim to, te to test your empathy, to test your levels of giving, to test your sympathy, to test how big of a caretaker you are. Number five, they find out the information about your resources, your potential, your success, what you have gained in your life, because that gives them an idea about how much they can take from you, how much they can suck from you, be it your money, be it your resources, be it your influence, anything. And how willing are you to give them a, a place in all of that? I have seen so many amazing people, so many successful people doing this one fatal mistake and giving them an equal position in their corporation, company or whatever they possess and making them an equal part. And that is where the narcissist gets the power. And then it becomes an extremely big obstacle when they try to cut off the narcissist because then they have to go through the legal processes and whatnot. So they would test what you have, how much you possess and how willing are you to contribute from it? How, how willing are you to make them a part of it? How willing are you to spend what you have on them. Number six, they test how willing are you to give up your life, the life that you have created so far, the friends, the family, the, the place that you have lived in or you are living in. How willing are you to change that? How willing are you to change your personality? How willing are you to change your choices that you make for yourself? Because when they test that, they almost a certain to what level they would be able to control your life later because they could be subtly suggesting things and wanting you to drop things change things by either a bad mouth thing about a friend or a family member or your job this that and the other to see what you are going to do if they see you're listening if they see that you are taking in the information without any filter, that gives them a sign that this means I can control this person to a great extent later. I have seen it, it's my observation that these people who tend to be more suggestible and listen to the narcissist without filtering the information that is coming from them, they lose absolute control later because such kind of narcissist controls their eating, clothing, sleeping, the people they meet, the people they have in their life, the, the friends they make, the job, the money, every minute thing that you can imagine is then being controlled later. So this is also they test for. Number seven and the final thing is they test your forgiveness. What I mean by that is that a narcissist sees what are you going to forgive and to what extent are you going to do that? Meaning they would make mistakes and then apologize, which would be definitely fake but intentional. However, it would be a test to see, okay, this is the level of, you know, forgiveness that I can get from it, which means I can get away with this amount of abuse that I will do later in the future. So they are testing your level of, again, how much you can take, how much you can forgive and how much you can let them get away with. How they are testing if you are going to hold them accountable later in the relationship or not. They're also going to test you for how vulnerable you become and how easily you become that. And they do it by asking you about your childhood, about your previous relationships, to study your behavior, to see what traits can be used against you. In a nutshell, these people are very 
much like predators who study the prey for days before attempting to hunt them. They, the hunting process is very careless and merciless because like a tiger or lion would separate that one animal from the group, the same thing employs hair. Slowly, they groom you, make you feel that they are someone you can rely on and they are someone you can trust in. And once they gain this trust, they extract that information. They push your buttons and see which buttons are pushable. Once they have that understanding of yours, they can then analyze and assess how to proceed ahead, ahead with you. The testing doesn't only happen on a verbal level. It also happens on a non-verbal level. They see how anxious you become when they do something. What are your anxiety levels? What are your stress levels? What is your body state overall? How do you carry yourself? How do you communicate? And how do you feel when you communicate about a certain thing because they can then use those emotions against you. Basically, these people look for the cracks in your personality and your psyche to use them against you. That's why someone who is well bonded, someone who knows their worth, someone who knows their value, someone who knows when to say no, and someone who knows how to recognize a user, a narcissist, they will never fall into the trap. Someone who is healed will never fall into the trap. This is what you have to look for. And with that, I hope today I was able to help you understand how the whole dynamic works and how these predators look for their kind of prey and how you can avoid them. I'll talk with you very soon in the next episode. Till then, let the healing begin.